Yes, for John Dune, Vocel Darakir, Une Mankerbar, Une Motivar, Azat Ayrenik, Yerchanik Yergir, Yerchanik, Yerchanik Yergir. The opportunities are endless. It really depends on the individual, their openness, their mind, their willingness. And as an organization, we, we kind of encourage all of that to take place. Our goal, I think, is to not give someone a two-month experience and then bye-bye, have a nice life. We want to uh, encourage a long-term relationship with the country. Mm -hmm. This country uh, doesn't really need, you know, just tourists. It needs people to engage with it. It needs people to, you know, have a relationship with it, not just for you know, this amount of time, but for, you know, the rest of their lives. And we want to encourage that process. It's a personal process. It's a beautiful process. It could be a very meaningful process for the participant. So once the volunteering time finishes, we don't say bye-bye, have a nice life. We say, how can we keep supporting you? How can we keep working with you? I think one of the major growth areas of our program is how can we support alumni in better and better and better ways? Because that's where, you know, that's where the numbers are growing. That's where the experience is growing. And you know, we just need to bring back a lot of the, this that diaspora and, you know, potential and diaspora knowledge, right, to this country's real success. We live in extremely critical times in Armenia. And we need, you know, we need smart people who are more and more and more committed My name is Leonardo, I'm from Brazil. I came in Armenia in the last February. So in, in this month I complete one year and uh, I'm volunteer. And I'm doing translations and uh, helping Armenians uh, music groups to talk with uh, Portuguese speakers. So that's what uh, I'm doing here in Armenia. I plan to stay here to to find a job, to, to live in Armenia for life. Okay, so let's but I don't know if I'm going to get the apartment because there's a, a line. So my job at Burford Armenia is um, to provide volunteers with a homestay, with a family where they stay during their volunteering, uh, organize their language classes, and also provide psychosocial support. And I guess what I like most about working at Burford is meeting all this young diaspora Armenians from all over the globe, but also just being a witness to how the, how this journey changes their lives, how they connect to Armenia, how they understand themselves through that connection, much better understanding their families. You know, I had one volunteer who said, oh my God, like I came here because of my father who died a couple of years ago. And now when I see all the people in Armenia, I understand my father. I understand why he was saying these things, why he was doing these things. Um, so understanding their family, understanding their history, understanding where they came from, understanding themselves, and changing through that experience. And when you see that people change in, in a... It's, it's sort of like a magic, you know, when they come as one person and they leave, they're a different person. So that's my favorite part. My life takes me from Beirut, Lebanon, where I was born and lived the first part of my life. Uh, then during the Civil War, we moved uh, to the United States. Most of my time in the United States, I lived in Los Angeles, like hundreds of thousands of other Armenians. And uh, that's where I went to a university. That's where I started my, my career uh, in aerospace engineering. I worked at the Boeing company. Most of you have heard of that company. Uh, so I was, I was in the um, airplane design uh, uh, division. Beautiful career. I love aviation. I love aerospace. Beautiful career. 
And then um, the next phase of my life was moving to Armenia, 2006. And uh, we've been here for almost now the last 15 years with me and uh, my own family. Um, that's basically my circumnavigation of the globe. When I first came to Armenia, I mean, it wasn't 2006, that was not my first time. The first time that I came to Armenia, it was uh, back in 1978 during Soviet times, so Soviet Armenia. And I was, a, I, was a, I was a very young teenager at that time, and we came uh, with a group of students from different countries, and we were in Vanatsur, called um, Girovagan at that time. We were in Camp Ardek. And we were there for, I don't know, maybe two weeks or so, two weeks, three weeks, I can't remember the exact uh, time frame. But that was my first time foot on the ground in Armenia. Uh, before that, Armenia was a, uh, was a concept, you know, it was a story, but it wasn't re a real place. Coming here, as, as, as challenging as those, um, as those uh, days were, it was a beautiful experience, it was a very important experience because it made Armenia a real place for me. Jumping forward to 2006, it's, it's interesting. Um, <clears throat> I always get asked the question, what did you think and what, what was the reality? Uh, it's interesting that people ask that question about Armenia, but people don't ask that question when, if someone moves to Sydney. What, what did you think and what did it turn out to be? It, but, but with Armenia, you know, there's this expectation, maybe this hidden expectation that, you know, it, it's not as as um, beautiful as your dreams, you know, thought it to, to be. Uh, so there, there was going to be a challenge. You're going to be disappointed. Um, and I always answer this question in the same in the same way, and I'll give you the same answer here. Our relationship with Armenia uh, uh, was not one that was you know uh, developed overnight. It was a it was a lifelong you know relationship that we, we developed with the country. Therefore, um, in that kind of a process, uh, there's very little chance of shocks, and. Uh, you know, major shifts from what you thought to what the reality is. Uh, in, in our case, it, it was a very smooth and seamless transition because we came to what we, th what we knew we were coming to. It was not our first trip to Armenia. It was our first, you know, permanent move to Armenia, right? But it was not our first time in Armenia. So. You take a country as a package, Ishan. You don't take a country as, uh, uh, you know, black or white. Hi, I'm Lilith. Uh, I'm uh, the job site placement and special projects coordinator. I love everything about Birthright, but uh, one of the main things I like about this organization is the diversity, of course. Um, uh, I see so many people from different uh, countries. I talk to uh, these people in their languages. I try to learn uh, new things uh, from all their languages. There are people from Brazil, from Ukraine, <laughs> from Lebanon. Uh, so yeah, it's very cool. Hi, I'm Rosani. I'm from Lebanon. I came to Birthright almost five months ago. And I've been working as a video editor with Faces of Armenia through Birthright. And what I love about Birthright, it's the diversity that you experience with different people coming from different countries. And you get to know each other and we get to know Armenia together through different people's eyes, through their experience. And it's really great experience to have once in your life. It's not black and white. It, it's, it's a complete package of everything. Mm -hmm. Like any country, like Russia, yep. like USA, like Australia, it's a complete package. And you have to embrace the complete package. There are things that are fantastic. There are things that, you know, are, you know, changing over time. And you have to be respectful of that. You have to be, you have to be respectful of the process. 
Some things can be accelerated, maybe. Some things cannot be accelerated. Some things should not be changed. We embraced Armenia for its, you know, for its totality, for it, all of it. And that's why, you know, there was no shock. There was no disappointment. That's, there was no, why did we come here? There was no, uh, what are we doing here? There was no, when are we going back? So, and you know, that was true 15 years ago, and that's true today. And when people react to Armenia in this black and white fashion, you know, right, wrong, you know, it's, it's unfortunate because every country goes through its, you know, through its evolutions, developmental evolutions. Mm -hmm. And uh, Russia has done the same over centuries. USA has done the same. Australia is doing the same. And you look at that development cycle in, in all countries, there is no single country which didn't have extreme challenges. No. You know, uh, near, near, you know, complete challenges. You know, there, there is no country like that. But the successful countries are the ones who are able to adapt and move on and do better and do better. They have a vision and they drive towards that vision. And, um, you know, I... Um, you know, I always want Armenia to be that country, you know, with a vision of where it wants to be in the next, you know, 50 years or so. And um, we believe, you know, uh, we believe in Armenia. You know, it's not, it's not just, you know, blind love of yeah. Armenia. Yeah. Because blind love, you know, is not grounded in reality. Your, your understanding of Armenia has to be grounded in, in, in complete reality. And uh, you have to appreciate all of the difficulties and the challenges and the mistakes and the errors, mm -hmm. as well as you have to appreciate the things about it that are, you know, just absolutely uh, fantastic and mm -hmm. uh, inspiring. Varev, I am Anait from Armenian Volunteer Corps. Armenian Volunteer Corps, ABC, accepts all international volunteers from the age of 21 and with no upper age limit. Uh, the most uh, things that I love about my job is the dynamic atmosphere, international component, and of course the birthright and the ABC stuff. When we came, you know, people didn't really stop for pedestrians. Yeah. You know, there were no pedestrian crossing lanes and people didn't stop for pedestrians. But I didn't, I didn't get shocked because I knew that this was the reality of this country at that time. You know, I cannot bring Glendale, California and just su superimpose it on Yerevan the same year. Mm -hmm. Because Glendale has had pedestrian, you know, you know, foot traffic understanding for, you know, many, many years. It developed it, right? And Armenia didn't have it at that time. So people had to be careful crossing the street. I didn't get shocked. I didn't get angry, right? And over the years, the pedestrian, you know, crossing lane concept sort of developed. Yeah. And more and more people were stopping. Are we at the same level as the most pedestrian-friendly country in the world? No. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be now. It's a process. Just like that is in a process, everything else is, is in a process. Yeah. You know, were we shocked that, you know, we didn't have hypermarkets and big, huge supermarkets? We, di we didn't, you know, we just, you know, shop where everyone else was shopping, you know. Uh, you know, uh, we, we, we sent our kids to school like, like, you know, everyone else went to school. Um, um, so it was, a, it was a, there was nothing, and I'm not exaggerating, Ishan, there was really, uh, nothing, when you embrace the package, that's the whole point, when you embrace the package, yep. there isn't something that then you focus on, oh, you know, well, well, this is awful, this is, you know, unacceptable, this is, you know, th there are things that, you know, you want to see differently, but I'm not judgmental in that sense. Oh, this is unacceptable, this is, you know, of course there are things that to me are un unacceptable, but Things go through a process, and the more inspired you are to be part of that process, to be a positive influence in the whole process of a country, the more inspired you are about it in a positive way, in a constructive way, the more effective you will be. Uh, so I came in Armenia, I came from France in Armenia just for this job, 
So I'm the marketing director of Bursarit Armenia and the Armenian Volunteer Corps. I did the same in Paris in my previous job, but this one was so symbolic because it's about Armenia and I'm Armenian too. So I couldn't stay in France if I had the opportunity to come and to like, like to attract people to come in Armenia, to attract volunteers. So it's my main job with Armenia, of course, we are a team. So our main objective is to catch their atten attention, to the, the diaspora's attention, and to bring them in Armenia. So it's like every morning you wake up and you're like, okay, today, what should I do? Like, what creative ideas should I have to attract people in Armenia? And it's for me, the, honestly, it's the best job I could have now, at least in my life. So I, when I when I knew that I will be that I will do this job in Armenia, I didn't hesitate, and I came like six months after I came in Armenia, and now like I'm here for almost one year, and it's amazing. I love my job. We moved in April of 2006. I've been, you know, my my employment has been here in this office since that time. Um, and uh, I've been here for the last 15 years, and this, as an organization, uh, what, what we had in 2006 and what we have in 2021 is a very different organization in many ways, many ways, numerically, uh, demographically, uh, diversity-wise, in terms of countries represented, um, you know, how long people stay. It used to be much more of a summer program, and now it's a, it's a really a much more of a full year, you know, people coming in different times of the year uh, program. Uh, and, uh, you know, we were very much Yerevan centric at that time, Yerevan focused. And then we started moving out of Yerevan, and um, uh, we've had volunteers in uh, many, many cities. We have a base in Gumri. So I've been, you know, I've been fortunate enough to be part of this organization during that time. And people say, don't you get bored by doing the same thing? Yeah. And really, it's not the same thing. It's never the same thing because there's always someone new coming in. And for them, it's their experience. It's their first time you know, doing this experience as a volunteer. So for me, working with that person is not the same because that person wasn't here before. So to me, as much as for the volunteer, it's a new, new thing. For me, it's a new thing. I never go to the same excursion twice because every time it's a new group of people, yeah. you know, across, uh, you know, the, the seats on the bus. Um, so, and the fact that we're always developing, we're always changing, we're always adapting, we're always growing, and you know, in, in smart steps, I think, uh, makes this, you know, you know, position uh, continually inspiring. Well, of course, we have Yerevan as our main office, as our main headquarters. Um, we have a staff here, we have volunteers here. Now we have a full-time, you know, full-year office in Gumri, where we have the staff, where we have a beautiful office in the old district of Gumri. Um, and we have volunteers there 12 months out of the year. Um, in the summer months, um, of course, before before COVID hit and we had this huge drop in numbers, you know, in 2020, obviously. But um, uh, we've had a summer program in Banatsur. Uh, we've had vo volunteers in Artsakh. Uh, we've had volunteers, you know, serving, you know, small parts of their time in Gapan, in uh, in Goris, in Dilijan, and so on. Many many participants don't just stay in one city, but they uh, split their time between Yerevan and another city uh, because the more diversified the experience, uh, Ishan, the more things you do, the more things you see, uh, I think that the better. In, when we first started in, you know, way back in 2004, um, you know, volunteer average stay was about, you know, um, two months or so. Uh, last year, our average stay was uh, over four months. So there's a huge uh, jump. And again, it used to be a summer program, and we cannot emphasize the importance for people to understand that this is not a summer, it's not a summer program, it's not a summer experience. Yeah. 
If you want to come in the summer only, you know, you can do that. But that's very limiting. The longer you stay, the more you understand. The more you see outside of the summer, the more you understand because you're not here with every other tourist, you know. If you're here New Year's, winter, when it's cold, when you don't have the outside cafes and so on, it's even, it's even more different. Um, we highly encourage volunteers to stay with host families, which is, which are, you know, part of our program because living with families, that kind of connection is very important. A lot of volunteers stay with host families for some time and then they stay in their own places, you know, for, for other, other, you know, the rest of their time. So this kind of diversification and doing different things, Gumri and then Yerevan, some other city and Yerevan, homestay and, you know, host family and, you know, no host family, you know, and then different job sites, you know, a few job sites, you know, for a few months and then, you know, a couple of months, some other job site. This kind of diversification is very, very interesting and I think it's very, very important. And I, and I think what needs to be also mentioned is that we're very flexible in terms of what the volunteer is looking for and um, us to adapt to that, to that need, you know. Uh, so in terms of where can you volunteer? Where can you do an internship? It's not just, you know, 10 places. We have, an or we have a database of a thousand places. And you can volunteer in many, you know, depending on what your field is. If you're an architect, you're a designer, you're in that sector, or you're in the healthcare sector, or uh, you're, you're a teacher, or you're in the social work sector. And, you know, it's, it's very, very diverse. Um, so we also have that adaptability and flexibility. What I like the most about Birthright is the spirit that we have here, a working atmosphere, and the volunteers who bring more joy and like double the spirit, positive spirit here at Birthright and in Armenia. So welcome everybody to our program. Right. So out of the 2000 that we mentioned, um, over 200 um, now live in Armenia. So that's about, uh, let's say, 10% or so. Um, so it's a, um, it's a much higher statistic compared to the diaspora average. It's a much higher statistic. And I think what we need to uh, really focus on is not just who's living in Armenia now, who moved to Armenia now, but how many people are we, are we getting or encouraging to think about a serious, impactful relationship with this country. Um, so it's a very long-term process because some person might not be physically living here necessarily, but they're doing very important and impactful uh, things, you know, in this country for this country. Um, so we want to have every person from where they were move forward a few steps in terms of that relationship, in terms of developing that relationship. And moving here, physically moving here, is definitely one expression of that commitment, of that, you know, developed relationship. About, uh, about one third of our uh, participants come in with uh, no knowledge of Armenian language or very little knowledge of Armenian language. So knowing Armenian is not a requirement to apply to this program. Um, we've seen so many people with no language, you know, over several months after, you know, really being serious about learning the language, you know, become very nicely, very nicely conversational. And I remember, we had, um, we had a volunteer from uh, the USA and another volunteer from, um, uh, from France. This was about 10 years ago. Neither of them spoke Armenian when they came. But uh, they stayed here for maybe four months or so, and both of them had this very nice conversational level. So we were going somewhere, and, and we were sitting in a taxi, and they were sitting in the back, and I'm sitting next to the driver, and I say, uh, you know, Chris, uh, you know, you know, both of you learned Armenian here. Why don't we just have a conversation here between the two of you? And I started recording it. And in the back of the taxi, these 
these two people started um, speaking Armenian to each other, and we posted it on, uh, I don't know, it's on some social media channel. It got very nice reviews. Gustavo, uh, you're in Aluez, Argentina? Um, yes, in Aluez, Argentina, um, uh, September, year September, year uh, inch on Aluez. Uh, I think, uh, yes, uh, yes, PT, um, Metnet. Nor Ashkatan, yes, 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 and we've seen some people who, despite that goal, ended up staying for eight months, 10 months. They ended up coming back with um, uh, major projects. I remember one specific individual from Los Angeles, uh, and she was gonna be here for only one month because she had to go back to her job. And uh, she, extended that one month to two months. She was able to get her supervisor to allow her to stay longer. Long story short, over the next maybe three years or so, she probably spent at least one year of that time here in Armenia, in, during which uh, she formed an organization to, to send uh, 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 you know, uh, emergency first respondents equipment to you know, to the to the ministry, to different you know hospitals, yeah. to different schools, and her goal was to be here for only one month. And as she was thinking about you know extending, I remember this quote that she said. You know, my job in in, in Los Angeles, you know, without me, there's someone else as qualified as I am sitting there, you know, doing my job. You know, they don't necessarily miss my expertise. But I recognize that over here, when I'm doing my trainings, there are so many things that I'm able to uh, relay that people are um, weren't exposed to before, and they're so absolutely willing to learn and understand. I understand I matter here so much, and that's what you know. Despite her initial goal, that's what you know encouraged her to have this much longer. Uh, 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 Commitment yep. uh, to Armenia, and you know we can go, we can go on and on. There, there, there are so many, there are so many things. You know, we've had you know participants um, who've um, who participated in the armed forces. You know, been in active uh, battles, war. Uh, you know, that's that's you know certainly one level of commitment, and um, <clears throat> so many projects, so many uh, other you know models of engagement. I was born in Armenia, but I spent most of my childhood in the Armenian diaspora, mostly in Syria and Lebanon. Um, and I came back to Armenia six years ago to continue my education at the American University of Armenia. And then right after my graduation, I joined Birchai, and now I work as a marketing and social media coordinator here. My main job, basically same as Nelly's, is to think of creative and interactive ways of how we can involve more diaspora and how we can attract more people to come to Armenia. Um, as a person who spent um, 11 or 12 years in the diaspora, I believe that Armenia needs diasporans. And um, you know, it's a little different when you put your soul, your mind, your belief in your work rather than you just do what you have to do for the sake of uh, working. I'm working with Birchred for almost nine months now, and I have seen people from all over the world, and I have discovered Armenian communities in parts of the world that I have never thought that Armenian communities existed there, such as Uruguay, um, Argentina. We even had a volunteer from Zimbabwe who was not Armenian, but she was so eager to explore our culture. And that's what mainly motivates me and inspires me to continue to do what I do and um, to come to work as excited 
um, as the previous day. What I appreciate the most about Birchright is that Birchright's ideology goes in hand in hand with Armenia's needs, because currently Armenia needs professionals from um, all types of uh, academic background and professional skills. So, yeah, this is probably the most um, motivating thing about Birchright for me that uh, by bringing to Armenia people with diverse backgrounds, we are contributing to Armenia's advancement and continuous development. I can say that uh, in October, November and December of last year, compared to the year before, we've had uh, quite a few more applications. Even though we have still COVID, and the fear of traveling with COVID. Um, I think the, the reality of the war and the, and the visibility of the challenge that this country faces has pushed enough people to make the commitment to you know, start this journey. So that has weighed more than the fear of COVID on the other side. So both of these together and you see that people, there are more people who are applying than, 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 than last year. Uh, if, if we look at uh, the months before that, before the war, uh, we had less applications and that was primarily caused by the COVID reality. But October through the end of December, we're seeing this you know, sharp rise. And I think, and I think this is an indication, uh, Ishkhan, that there are a lot of good people out there um, who are uh, who are ready to start, you know, some sort of exploration about what they want to do, what they want to commit to, uh, what are their priorities, and so on. Um, some of this might be, you know, sh short term, uh, but I think that, that the most important thing is that decision to commit. Once you commit, what where that takes you, no one really knows. As I gave you that example already, so many people come with a certain idea in mind initially. And once they're here, it ends up being you know, very different than what they were thinking. So that commitment gets them on this, on this, you know, on this moving belt. Once they're on that belt, there are so many things that you know, show up you know, on either side of that journey that it, um, it takes them in directions that they never imagined. And we are going to more and more focus on people who are looking at Armenia not just as a two-month destination for volunteering and just having fun, but as a place where um, can add meaning, more meaning to their life, more purpose to their life, more value to the skills that they have. There are obviously skills that are much more required than others, but we don't want to say you are not needed here in Armenia. <laughs> everyone, I am uh, the volunteer coordinator at Birchright Armenia. I really like my job, I am in love with my job, I am in love with what I am doing. I am in love that I will meet many people from around the world. I really like meeting motivated Armenians who want to come to Armenia to help Armenia and Armenians and also during these uh, bad times when the any help is more than needed, so yeah. Show the commitment, and as you're here, there are so many things that, you know, uh, are possible that really will serve the purpose of this country's existence, this country's, um, you know, preservation, this country's security. Um, this is an extremely important priority for every Armenian to have in their life, commit to this country's preservation. This is a very, very important priority. Often we didn't think you know, of Armenia in that sense. We, were just, we just loved Armenia. Armenia doesn't need love. Armenia needs your commitment. Armenia needs your real work. And this is the message that has to be out there. You know, oh, I love Armenia. Oh, I care about Armenia. Oh, I, I uh, wish good for Armenia. They're all useless unless you transform that yeah. into real action and real commitment and real dedication to the preservation of this country, 
the rest, you know, it's just sentiment. Yeah, yeah we don't we don't need emotional, uh, uh, you know, patriotism. We need practical patriotism. We need practical, you know, commitment and love of this country. Of course, you have, you have all kinds of people all the time. In the worst times, in the most challenging times, you have people who are extremely committed to this country. And in the quote-unquote best of times, you have people who had no commitment to this country. You've had, you have the entire spectrum the whole time. I think over the years, uh, you know, things moved forward. I would say from 2006 when I first arrived here, I think, you know, things you know, generally moved, you know, in a positive direction, even though we might have had ups and downs at different, you know, different phases. Because the country was developing, opportunities were, uh, you know, were more and more. And the more opportunity, the more stability, the more faith you have, the more, you know, connection you have and so on. And this is true for the average, average person, let's say. I think right now we live in a very, very challenging time. And uh, unfortunately, when there's more commitment required, there's more real commitment required, you might have less people who are, you know, making that commitment and more people are saying, oh my God, this is completely, you know, hopeless and uh, let's just uh, find other, you know, opportunities in our life. It's unfortunate. I think, I think Armenians, we are very emotional people. We're very emotional. Um, and this is not just true for this year. This is true for the last 2000 years. And I think, you know, that kind of, that kind of pure emotion, raw emotion, I think sometimes clouds our reason. And right now, and I, we've always needed in Armenia, we've always needed, you know, cool, dispassionate, non-emotional commitment. And when there's more challenge, the logic is you're, you're going to be even more committed. Right? And sometimes when emotion comes in, it doesn't go in that direction. It goes in the opposite direction. So we just need, you know, cool-headed, you know, rationalizing, uh, rational, you know, dispassionate, uh, dispassionate approach to solving the extreme challenges that we face today. Um, so, people will remain emotional, but what we need to really focus on are those who are, who are able to uh, temper and balance that emotion with an important dose of you know, dispassionate logic, logical reasoning. And that kind of commitment. Sometimes uh, just a pure emotion just takes us from one place to the other and we get, you know, yeah. that's not healthy. That's not what we need. And I think for everyone, you know, watching us now, um, we, have to be, we have to be now, we have to be very, very practical. And we have to be very, very committed. And we have to face all of our mistakes. We have to admit all of us, all of our mistakes, from the from the last citizen to the highest, you know, um, person, you know, of, of of position in this country. We really have to we have to do that um, because um, there aren't you know millions of opportunities that a nation is given, and we're no exception. I think uh, all of us have to have to be extremely cognizant of, of what's going on here, and we have to be smart about how to move ahead. What does it mean to you to be an Armenian? It's a very good question, Ishkhan. I don't know if I've ever been asked that question before, but uh, I, I want to thank you for asking that question. You know, there's this very um, uh, unfortunate uh, 
duality that, um, or, or this unfortunate notion of, of nationalism, right? Um, sometimes nationalism, you know, is um, uh, mistaken for discrimination. Sometimes nationalism is mistaken as being a competitor to globalism and openness and diversity. And that's very unfortunate. Because I think, why am I committed to Armenia? Because Armenia in the global reality is an important player. And it has been for a long time in history. It has been in existence. And when it has been healthy, when it has been viable, when it has been safe, it has added a lot, not just for itself, but for world civilization, for, for the globe. That's why I want Armenia to succeed. Not, just, not because we're, we're better, we're smarter, we're geniuses, right? We're different, no? No, because when we exist, and when we exist in a healthy environment, when we exist in a protected environment, we add to make the globe better. So I want Armenia to be safe and strong and viable and have its uniquenesses. So, as so if you want to call that nationalism, it's for the importance of the globe to be a, a better place. Imagine if the whole globe was, you know, just one thing, right? Yeah. Then you lose diversity. Yeah. The fact that you have all these differences, you have all these, you know, national existences, makes the globe diverse. So trying to water down that, you know, that uniqueness is anti-globalist. This country, you know, uh, it, it needs to be part of this world fabric, world mosaic. It has been. Armenians go to many different parts of the world and you see them, you know, being successful and they're being inventors and they're being this and that. But the hub, the nation is very important because that's where you're always preserved and protected. Outside, you have many influences that work, you know, that's, you know, the assimilation and so on. The hub has to be healthy, the engine has to be vital. That's how I define my, my Armenianness. Thank you, Mr. Kabakian, for this interview and being honest. And it was very interesting. Excellent, Nishkan. I'm, I'm glad to have spoken with you and uh, to our beautiful audience. Thank you.